Right now all other humans disappear. What is your immediate plan and long-term goal? Successful mini raid of Area 51. Make some alien friends. I see no obvious women in this thread. If I knew somehow that I was the absolute last person in existence, I would hit up the nearest sperm bank and figure out how to keep the freezers powered when the grid goes down. Canned food will sustain me for months or years, but me or any other human all alone would go insane long before the end of my natural life. I'd have some kids, and hopefully not die in childbirth. Do all I can to safeguard keeping the freezers on, as apparently frozen sperm are viable indefinitely. So any female children of mine would be able to have more children without having to resort to inbreeding. Cross my fingers and hope my genetic diversity bank survives long enough to restore enough human population to be sustainable. In the meantime I would do other things such as establish a crop and livestock supply, but as I said, canned goods will be in every grocery store and every abandoned home. So I'd have several years of time to put that together before I was threatened by lack of food. All of us dudes are just gonna die, and that'll be it for humanity, while you're in here saying you'll become Eve. Props. Find Ferrari, steal Ferrari, drive Ferrari off the white cliffs of Dover. While listening to Cliffs of Dover, there'll be bluebirds over. First, hoarding non-perishable food, clean water, water filters, and firewood. After a few days of storing these, I'd probably start thinking longer term by looking for antibiotics, farming supplies, plow animals and fencing. Ultimately, I guess my goal is learning to be happy with horses, dogs and cats as my company as I run a quaint, little farm. Oh man I forgot about all the animals. Even if all the people cleanly disappeared, i.e. not rotting corpses, all the animals would still be a serious problem. Roving packs of now feral dogs, dead starved livestock and pets all over, for a good little while it would be a hellscape of wild, dead and dying animals. That's something that most apocalypse shows and movies don't really take into account. Yeah, I had a few talks with people along the lines of what would you do if you weren't snapped after Infinity Gauntlet? I.e. half of all life disappears. My first thought was organize whoever is left to go around checking for unattended animals and children. Flag completely empty homes as you go. TBH I was really disappointed that we didn't get to see more of how people reacted in that time frame. Gather food and other essentials, weapons, etc., find a place that's easy to defend against wild animals and zoo escapees, in the awareness that nuclear plants will go critical after a while and I'll be toast. I'm legit curious, do nuclear reactors realistically melt down or go critical if they stop being operated? Or do they shut down with fail-safes? I mean there's fail-safes but we can't assume a 100% success rate around the world. I'd just go ahead and assume that Russia is slash will be radiated. Survive. A reasonable idea, I guess. Enjoy the goddamn peace and quiet. Until you remember you have tinnitus. Immediate plan is secure my doggo. Next to secure more doggos. Train Doggo Army. Prepare for return of those who walk on two legs. In downtime epic games if fetch slash capture the flag. You get bit by a dog with rabies and die in a week. I'm in Manhattan right now. If I knew that everyone else was gone, I'd probably stay here. Make my home base in the main branch of the NY Public Library, so that I'd have easy access to books for entertainment and knowledge, without going too far away from the river. Raid Home Depot for seeds and supplies. Start a small farm in the park next to the library. Slowly gather canned goods from restaurants, delis, and grocery stores, and hope that NYC models stock fishing gear. If I didn't know whether or not everyone was gone, or if we are talking a plague situation and Manhattan is filled with millions of decomposing corpses, I'd make my way home on bike, a 4 hour trip according to Google Maps if I take the GWB bridge rather than going through the tunnels, and spend a few days seeing if my husband shows up. If he never does, I'd relocate to my town's library and leave a note for my husband slash family in case they show up. Living in a library sounds absolutely lovely. 
I present to you, the Twilight Zone, time enough at last https colon slash slash www.dailymotion.com slash video slash x5smh3t. Finally I can read all my books. Oh no, my glasses broke. That was a good episode. Oh god that was so depressing. You're talking about the Twilight Zone right? This doesn't really answer the question, but it just occurred to me so I thought I'd share. I honestly think I would still shut the door when I pooped. Obviously. You are a survivor, not a savage. Incidentally, personally, I would be fucked the moment my glasses become inoperable. Time enough at last Twilight Zone. It's not fair. It's not fair. There was time now. T underscore T. Immediately, not much. I'd be fine for weeks, especially with no other people around. I'd probably just look around to try to find out what happened. If it's clear people aren't coming back, then I'd likely try to find a way to repopulate humanity. Cloning or monkey fucking. Whatever it takes. Try to bring them back, duh. Looks like you better go looking for that infinity gauntlet, my dude. Rescue all the lonely pets I can and die happy. Yeah I was looking for someone to say they'd release all the animals in zoos, humane societies, large scale animal feeding operations, etc give them a chance at least. Also maybe while you're freeing them you meet a tame lion that takes a liking to you. Now you have a lion friend. Keep telling yourself he's your friend. Don't worry. It's going to be fine. After some very intense morning, I guess I would decide to have whatever adventure I could. Explore the world since there would be no money needed. No people left means I could go wherever I wanted without repercussion. There should be enough grocery stores filled with non-perishables to keep me going for a while, though they would really start to smell after a while as the produce and meat starts to foul. So it wouldn't be fun, but it would be livable I suppose. Assuming I'd be able to find gas stations that can function without a fully operating electricity grid, I should be able to keep moving in a car, at least in my current hemisphere. Should I ever decide I want to go over to the other side of the world, that would be a bit more of a problem. But I don't think I'd immediately kill myself. Curiosity would take over, and I'd want to see some of the more protected areas of the world if at all possible. I sure wouldn't love it, though. Being all alone is rough, especially when there's a 0% chance you'd ever see anyone else. I have no idea how poor my survival instincts are, either, so I might not even last a year. It's definitely an interesting what-if scenario. FYI, gasoline goes bad after enough time. So around 6 months or so you would start finding cars that run really rough, and that would get worse over time. After a couple of years none of the gas you find is going to be usable. Find a biodiesel car and use some of the crops you will definitely be growing to make biofuel. You should have access to enough knowledge depots to create a rudimentary fermentation setup. Then you will have access to gas for your entire stay. My immediate plan would be to confirm all of humanity except me is gone. I would then fill my gas tank if it isn't already and head to the airport where I would try to find a small plane. The goal then would be to get to a very large city as they would have the most resources. I would take over one of the mansions and work on setting it up to be self-sufficient if it isn't already. Things like solar power, generators, a small garden for when canned and bagged goods run out in 10 to 20 years, and rainwater collection slash purification. At some point, power would fail and I don't think the public water system would last long at all. I suspect I would be working long days going back and forth from stores stockpiling supplies. If you raided the appropriate docks from, like, a university or library you could probably scrap together something like homemade windmills for power generation. Heck, find a kid's science guide on building your own hand crank generator and replace the crank with windmill blades. Rather than grabbing a mansion it might be wiser to focus on some place with a running source of water nearby, like a river. Then municipal water becomes a non-issue, and even a novice should be able to set up some basic irrigation. Figure out some simple, hardy crops and that could really offset your canned goods raids. It's funny that everyone brings up wind power, 
But what about solar power? I see lots of roofs with solar panels on top and if you can somehow get those down and use the ones you need slash store the ones you don't then you'd have a really good amount of power. Nothing much. I'll stay alive for as long as the medication I need stays viable for. Who knows how long that is, the best before date is a couple of years, but I assume it's probably going to be fine for a lot longer. Hopefully increased dosages of degrading pills would keep me going. Food as Ashens has demonstrated, can remain relatively food-like for a surprising amount of time. Water isn't an issue, so much rain. Also, I live a couple of hundred meters from giant Amazon and Aldi warehouses. They have a lot of stuff, but more importantly the roofs are entirely covered in solar panels. I might have a bit of a nap. First I need to eat as much perishable food as possible. Having to butcher a large animal for meat will be an act of desperation for the rest of my life, so I'm going to the nearest steakhouse and cooking myself all the delicious meat until I can't anymore. Then I hunt for drugs. Really good drugs. Once I'm stocked up, I go find that warehouse in Texas that has ready to ship sex dolls and get real weird for the rest of my life. You are my spirit animal. Kill myself. Yeah, same. Once I'm sure my family is gone I'm outy, they're my reason. I could probably live through anything if a single member of my family survived. If my wife or any of my kids were still alive I'd be willing to live a pretty horrid and miserable existence for their sake. If they all went though, yeah I'm gonna follow pretty soon after. Probably play on Minecraft while eating a sandwich till I eventually die. Immediate, befriend the prettiest pig. Long term, live with the pig. Download the entire contents of Wikipedia and WikiHow before the internet dies, move into a better house, raid a pet store and buy expensive food for my cats, I'll survive I guess. Bye? Who from? The imaginary people in my head that I'll make up to stave off the inevitable mental fracture I'd go through. Find the drug stashes. I'd be very sad, I wish it could be me and my girlfriend. Then I'd Google and print out everything important before internet slash power died. Then I'd get a wall and drive to an airport community in the mountains. On my way I'd get guns, hospital supplies, etc. I'd spend my days flying, hunting, farming, driving fast cars on empty roads, gathering resources etc. A lot of the people in those communities have their own gas tanks underground to fuel their plane. I'd probably set up a second base somewhere tropical for winters. I'd also raise a ton of animals. I'd have so many dogs it's crazy does dog food go bad. There will be dogs everywhere, including the ones trapped inside houses. Frown and you won't have to worry about dog food. The deer and rabbit population should explode for a while. Start downloading every piece of porn I can find. Gonna be a lonely few years. I'd just whack it to a magazine like a damn caveman. I'd just build my own woman. Greater than you mustn't be afraid to dream a little bigger, darling. Eames Tom Hardy Christopher Nolan Michael Scott. Wikipedia allows you to download all of its content at once. I'd start there. And you begin the apocalypse with phone at 0% battery that contains a synopsis of every episode of every TV show ever made. Then charge it again, power won't vanish immediately. Well the first few months will be great. Then when electricity runs out that will be shitty. Food wise? To be real, we have a ridiculous amount of frozen and canned foods. Electricity will be gone within a few days max, no power tomorrow morning after you wake up is even more realistic. Even modern power plants and modern supply systems need constant adjustment from humans. The main difference is if a power plant will shut down itself because alpha malfunction, if it will shut down because of a MOSIF short circuit or it will just burn down. But in the end this doesn't change anything. Find someone who has a good solar panel system on their house. Or better yet, a community that did. You can get enough power to at least keep refrigeration going for a while. Find some weed and the keys to an IMAX theater. No more popcorn throwing and screaming kids in a cinema. I call that a win.
Somehow, even with all the people gone, there will underscore still underscore be screaming kids throwing popcorn, oh no. Immediate plan is to avoid thinking about long term goals, because all directions I could go with that are pretty depressing. Raid some pharmacies for Xanax, then make a plan. I'm pretty sure the pharmacy would have no shortage of options for helping pass the time in a more enjoyable manner. <laughs>